magnetic field associated with current. All magnets have a north and a south pole. You can break a magnet into as many pieces as you like, and each fragment will still have a north and a south pole. Only another magnet or a magnetized object can detect a magnetic field. A compass is a movable magnet, and so it can align itself along the magnetic field of another magnet and so show it up to us. Iron filings can do this too. Here we have a bar magnet with iron filings around it. The iron filings have aligned themselves around the magnet's magnetic field, so making the field visible to us. Like magnetic poles repel and unlike poles attract one another. This means that if you were to put two magnets such that both the north poles were opposite one another, or so that the two south poles were opposite one another, then the two magnets would repel one another. On the other hand, if the north pole of one is opposite the south pole of the other, they would attract one another. This is because of an interaction of the fields of the two magnets. In the case of like poles, the magnetic fields interact in such a way as to force one another apart as shown by the iron filings between them being pushed away from one another. In the case of unlike poles, the magnetic fields interact in such a way as to bend into one another. The two fields bend together towards one another as shown by the iron filings between them. Draw in the direction each compass will point. Pause the video until you've answered this yourself. The compasses align themselves along the magnetic field line surrounding the magnet. The direction of the magnetic field can be seen as out of north, round and into south. And it is a three-dimensional magnetic field. So it exists above, to the side of, and all other angles around the magnet. The magnetic field is made visible here by the iron filings and by the compasses. It isn't only a bar magnet that has a magnetic field around it. Current carrying conductors also do. This was found one day by accident when compasses were placed around a conductor and it was noticed that when the current was switched on the compasses deflected in a circular pattern around the conductor. From this it was deduced that the current caused the magnetic field to develop around the conductor and this was shown up by the magnetic compass's deflection. To help us remember the direction in which the magnetic field exists around a current carrying conductor, the right hand conductor rule was made. Grasp the conductor with your right hand such that the thumb points in the direction of the current. Then your fingers will curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So if the current would be upwards, then you can see from the direction of the curling fingers that the magnetic field would be anti-clockwise around the conductor and a downward current would result in a clockwise magnetic field. To draw this on paper, we imagine ourselves looking at the conductor. If the current is flowing away from us, we represent this as a cross, as if it were the feathers of an arrow flying away from us. If the current is flowing towards us, we show this as a dot, as if it were the tip of the arrow flying towards us. We show the magnetic field as concentric circles around this with arrowhead showing the direction. Pause this video until you've worked out the direction of the magnetic field around each of these two conductors. And these are the answers. Magnetic field has magnitude represented by the field line density. If we want to represent a stronger magnetic field, we draw the concentric lines close together. A weaker magnetic field is shown by the circles being spread further apart. What about the magnetic field around a current carrying loop? Here we have a loop of wire carrying current upward on the left and downward on the right. If we took a cross section of this and we look at it from the top, what would the direction of the current in each side of the loop be? And what would the direction of the magnetic field around each be? The current would be towards us on the left hand loop and away from us in the right hand loop. Therefore, the magnetic field would be clockwise 
around the right hand loop and anti-clockwise around the left hand loop. Of course that is if we're looking from the top. Notice that in between the two sides the magnetic field lines reinforce one another since the two have the same direction there. Therefore the two sides of the loop would repel one another. This is another representation of the same principle. We have current flowing in a loop and therefore a magnetic field exists around each side of the loop. Convince yourself using the right hand conductor rule then the magnetic field would be as shown. What about if we have a series of these loops? We call this a solenoid. Current flows from the positive terminal of the battery around the loops and back into the negative terminal. Use the right hand conductor rule to convince yourself that the magnetic field around each of the lower sections of the loops is anti-clockwise and those around each of the upper sections is clockwise. These combine to form an overall pattern of magnetic field lines out and around and back in out, around, back in. Notice that this is the same magnetic field pattern as that of a bar magnet with the direction being taken as out of north, around and into south. To help us to remember which side of the solenoid acts as a north pole we use the right hand solenoid rule in which we grasp the solenoid with the right hand with our fingers curling around in the direction of the current and then our thumb would point towards the north pole of the solenoid. Practice this rule in this question. Which side is north? Pause the video until you've answered this yourself. The current flows in the direction out of the positive terminal and around the loops and back into the battery. Grasping the solenoid such that the right hands curl in this way will make the thumb point towards the right and that is where the north pole of this solenoid would be. What must current direction be to cause the solenoid magnetic polarity shown? The magnet is pointing or the compass is pointing away from the left hand side of the solenoid showing that the left hand side is the solenoid's north pole. A compass aligns itself along magnetic field lines and the field line direction of a solenoid is taken as out of north, round and into south. Another way in which we can see that this part of the solenoid must be north is that a compass's arrowhead is a little north pole and its tail a south pole and so the north pole's arrowhead would always point away from another magnet's north pole. It would be repelled by another magnet's north pole since they are both north poles. Whereas the tail, which is a south pole, would be attracted to a north pole. What must the current direction be to cause the left hand side of the solenoid to have a north pole? Pause the video until you've answered this yourself. Convince yourself that this diagram is consistent with the right hand solenoid rule. 